Something else I can mention right now, since there's nothing really going on. My all icon is blank. That's because, obviously, in the bonus missions, like in the Exylvanian bonus mission, you have the Exylvanian icon. The army's all icons are specific to the missions that they're in. So it's actually kind of difficult to put the Exylvanian all icon in other missions. Like, I haven't actually got it to work yet. So I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just make it blank for now. And maybe at some point I'll try to get it working. But in Battalion Wars 2, it's actually a lot easier to get the HUD working correctly for the army you're playing as. Which is what I did for the Battalion Wars 2 mission that I recorded. And yeah, and then I put these heavy tanks in the water and switch over to that tower to make sure it doesn't mow down all the Western Frontier grunts. And by the way, in order to free those Western Frontier gunships, you have to actually destroy this tower, so destroying the barbed wire isn't enough, and hopping out of the tower won't work either. The good news is, since the Frontier has so many grunts, they can really just whittle down your health in no time. I also can't lock onto them. Though that would be a pretty easy thing to fix. Because, as far as I know, there's an option in the XML for each unit, and you can just change it to lock on, true or false. That's at least how it works in Battalion Wars 2, which is why you can't lock on to your allies because their status is set to not let you lock on to them. Alright, so the Frontier gunships are freed. I send my rifle grunts into the fray. We'll see how long they last, I guess, when they get there. Also, these three capture points down here, strangely enough, they're set to neutral. I don't know why, since this island is supposed to be in Exylvania's control, but the cool thing is if you're Exylvania, you can actually have your units capture them before the Frontier gets here, which doesn't have any effect on the mission besides the fact that it makes the Frontier take longer to capture them, because they have to lower your flag before raising theirs. And then, of course, oh wow, that artillery unit actually gets some air right there when I drop it off that cliff. But at this point I have to actually be pretty careful because I'm running out of units. I only have five rifle grunts left, and that air transport doesn't actually have anyone in it. I can't control it because it's just empty. Because, yeah, it's that one over there that starts there, which I'm pretty sure we're just supposed to assume is their transport that brought the grunts that were already on the island. Oh yeah, and then the Frontier sends in their Strato Destroyer, just to make matters worse. But of course then Exylvania sends in their own transport copters. And we get more guys. Commander, I suggest you find those tea copters and bring them down. Oh yeah, and Exylvania, they also send in some fighters at this point, which is nice since I ran out. I mean, that should be a pretty clear indicator that changing the AI really does make an enormous difference. Because before when I was testing this, before I changed the AI, um, usually 
the Exylvanian um, fighters would end up winning against the Frontier fighters. But when I change the way their AI works, it could really go either way. And yeah, since we have these rifle grunts, we can actually go recapture those flags. And if we do, that also prolongs the frontier down here because they have to actually recapture the flags. And they will recapture them, which is interesting. Since normally the grunts, the Exylvanian grunts, don't go recapture the flags, as far as I know. But since you can make them do that, it's kind of funny. And <laughs> then I shot that grunt in the face. Herman wasn't too happy about that. Oh, that was dumb of me. That's the thing, though. In Battalion Wars 2, I don't think that can happen. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a moment where you can't be destroyed by walls when you first transfer to a unit. And yeah, the Exylvanian fighters don't have any issues, from what I could tell. They work pretty normally. Oh yeah, and then at this point, Exylvania sends in a couple more bombers. Which are still stuck in attack mode, so... And those Frontier Bombers are still alive. I'm not sure what they're doing over here, but... They were probably actually going after those towers. I think that's what they were doing at first. And then the Frontier finally finishes capturing those points. Two plus one makes three. <laughs> Which is why I was waiting to bomb them. Because I didn't want to accidentally take out those grunts before they finished. And we get some Strato Destroyers now. probably not that interesting since I already showed them off in my Battalion Wars 2 video, but I figured whatever, might as well also show them in this mission. Nice thing about them in this mission is they go into attack mode at the start, and as far as I know they go into attack mode on the commander, because I think that's what they do normally, but on like the bombers they aren't stuck in attack mode. Once you change their status they'll just stay in whatever status you set them to. Another Strato Destroyer? Looks like Kaiser Vlad doesn't take kindly to defeat. The Master Tactician always holds a little something in reserve. Would you agree, Colonel Austin? Quickly, Commander. Take direct control of our Strato Destroyer and engage the enemy. And I was going to go after their Strato Destroyer, but it was just kind of drifting off over there, so... And of course, at this point, the Western Frontier gets some fighter reinforcements as well. And for some reason, I decided to go after those instead. I'm kind of glad I did, because when I got there, I noticed they were acting really weird. I think this is a glitch some people already know about, though. But for some reason, they were, like, stuck in the water. I've never actually seen it before myself, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Also, as far as I could tell, my bombers were stuck in attack mode on the fighters, which is really weird. And not very smart. Where's your courage, Commander? You must return to the battlefield at once. 
And Herman's still complaining about that. But at this point, if I were to go kill the rest of his grunts, it wouldn't result in failure for the Western Frontier. So I'm not really sure why he still complains about that at this point. And then I decided that was enough of this mission. Though I was kind of looking for their strata destroyer. I think it either flew off the map or more likely it got destroyed by my fighters. Because, I mean, we have six at this point, so... Alright, any minute now, I crash myself, and then the mission's over. Yep, there it is. This day belongs to you, generals of the Western Frontier. This is a global conflict, and the balance of power can shift at any moment. Beware. Congratulations, Commander. We can now return this island to its rightful owner. Funny how I can still destroy that bomber, too, after the mission's over. Okay, and this is the last mission I decided to do. And I'm pretty sure this mission has the last units that I wanted to show anyway, so. I'm sending a gunship to reinforce your position. Lay down some heavy fire on those ACAC troops. And of course, the cutscene's completely messed up right here, because since my position on the map was farther along than it would have been, Betty was already like saying stuff that is irrelevant to what the cutscene should be showing. This is also another cutscene that I can't skip. Commander, all you gotta do is lead the attack on this side of the island. Simple, huh? And Solar Empire is already on the move at the beginning. Because by default, they're set to advance when you, like, move up on the island right there. So, since I was already ahead of where I should have been, they were already trying to get over here. But yeah, this is a battle station. Pretty awesome, the camera's not messed up, and it works perfectly, so I like that. And I'm pretty sure the reason for this is that they had originally intended for you to use the battle station in the bonus mission, because if you look back at one of the really early trailers for this game, the very end of it shows the commander controlling an Exylvanian battle station, so I'm guessing they had originally planned for you to use one. The coolest thing about this battle station that I never noticed until I was actually using it is that instead of bazooka veteran turrets like the Western Frontier has, you have light tank turrets. And their damage actually is just like light tanks. So I'm not entirely sure what the balancing factor is between the Western Frontier and Exylvanian battle stations, but I'm pretty sure having the light tank turrets is a lot better than having the bazooka turrets. The only possible upside is that maybe the bazooka turrets shoot faster, or maybe they don't have to take as long to reload. Not entirely sure. And then I wanted to hurry up and kill these Akak -Ak troops so that they would send in their gunship. Not that it's much of a problem, 
my minigun troops end up taking care of it, I think. And then, in order to progress the mission, I just go ahead and put the Exylvania Battle Station in the water. And move on to the next one. But of course, before I finish the mission, I wanted to show the Grenade Veterans and Akak -Ak Veterans. Neither of which actually work properly. And these, well, when I get to them, they're the only two units that you can't actually, like, shoot with. It's pretty strange. But first I wanted to trigger that battle station starting its approach to the Solar Empire base. You can also see that that minigun troop right there just went into follow mode on the battle station, so... There are actually times in the game where the enemy uses follow mode, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, this is the Akak veteran. Um, you can use him and everything, but he doesn't shoot. You can charge up his weapon, but nothing comes out. It's really bizarre, and I try to show it off right here. Like, it charges up, and then when you release the trigger, nothing. And I've tried not charging up. I've tried um, fully charging up. And if you tell the AI to attack something, like, it works and everything. But for some reason, when you're controlling him, it doesn't work. I don't know how hard it would be to fix that. Or if it's something that you could just edit in XML, but... And the same thing happens with the grenade troops, so... I don't know what the deal is with those guys. Especially, it's especially weird since the other Exylvanian units work, like the Rocket Veteran and Acid Gas Veteran. And then at this point, I had to be careful because the Akak -Ak troops, for some reason, when you get to that spot, they all converge on the anti-air vehicles, and if I don't tell them to stop, they'll completely destroy them, because of course in this game, uh, missile veterans and Akak -Ak veterans still did tons of damage to ground units. Of course in the second game, they fixed that, but in this game, they were still a really big threat. And then I wanted to pick up the pace a little bit, so I took direct control of this battle station and started moving it. So dumb that the Solar Empire only get, sends grunts at you. Like, you'd think they would at least send in some assault troops, but no. Just two rifle grunts. Two at a time, anyway. But it, I guess it's kind of nice, because when you're trying to beat this mission normally, they do stall the battle station. And depending on how well they can dodge, they can actually survive for a little while. Of course, since I'm taking control of it, I could just totally ignore those grunts and not worry about killing them. Which is what I did right there. I should also mention, I think the main downside to the Exylvania Battle Station is the fact that its main cannons 
are so far apart from each other. Because with the Frontier Battle Station, if you shoot at a vehicle like a heavy tank or something, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get both shots to hit. But with the Exylvanian Battle Station, there's a good chance that one of the shots will miss. So, kind of a downside. But on the other hand, it's also an upside if you're taking down infantry, because it really don't, it only takes one shot to kill an infantry unit. So, if the shots are more spread out, there's a better chance you're going to hit the infantry, and you can probably hit more infantry with one attack. So, it's really not a bad thing if you're going after infantry units. And then to finish this mission, I pretty much just launched an all-out assault on their base. And that gunship somehow survived. Not for long, though, because 12 ACAC veterans will make short work of that. But that's pretty much the mission. I decided to just give Exylvania the victory on this one, even though I could have at any time just drove their battle station into the water to finish it. Now under my complete control. And what a perfect spot for a vacation after I have led Exylvania to totally... It was definitely me that led Exylvania to total victory, so... Don't know what you're talking about. Mission failed. And let's see what rank I got. Or wait, no. No rank, because it displays defeat. I sometimes forget that, and I like expect it to display a victory thing, but whatever. So yeah, that was that. Um, this was kind of a long video, so sorry about that. But I figured it would be nice for people who care about this game. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll probably make one for Tundra, and I'll see you next time.